I welcome the opportunity to discuss the matter here today. The issue of nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation is one that Ireland can proudly say that it has taken the lead on in past times. Indeed, as my colleague Deputy Reiner said, Frank Aiken in 1958 took the lead on this matter when he proposed a series of resolutions in the UN General Assembly. From these, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, or NPT, was developed. Since its enactment in 1970, it has become widely adopted by most countries around the world. Its three key pillars have been hugely beneficial in controlling the development of nuclear weapons, and these are based around disarmament, non-proliferation, and the right to the, peace, the peaceful use of nuclear energy. Indeed, the initial success of the treaty is that the original five recognised states of the US, Russia, China, UK and France have ratified it, and this has led to reductions. Concerns have arisen, however, because the acquisition of nuclear arms by India, Pakistan, Israel and North Korea, countries that have not ratified this treaty, or in the case of the latter, withdrawn from it. Indeed, which, uh, indeed, Iran, which is a signatory to the NPT and has ratified it, has caused great controversy because of their nuclear developments. I know that the Irish state regards nuclear disarmament as a priority, and indeed has been vocal on this matter since those early resolutions in 1958. In 1998, the New Agenda Coalition was founded in Dublin, and a diverse group of countries that came together for an 18-point declaration entitled A Nuclear Weapons-Free World, The Need for a New Agenda. Since then, it has been very active in promoting the necessary steps towards full nuclear disarmament. The weakness, then, of the NPT is in its lack of binding targets, and there are calls for a nuclear weapons convention. I am very supportive of these calls. They seek to ban the manufacture, stockpiling or use of nuclear weapons, and will provide specific timeframes for disarmament. It is worth noting that this idea is supported by 146 countries and has the backing of the UN General Secretary Ban Ki-moon. I must say I was quite surprised for information sent to me this week by the Irish CND, who stated that AIB in a majority state ownership lent 28 million US dollars to an American company involved in nuclear weapons industry in 2010. This is very disappointing, and I know that other countries like Norway and New Zealand prohibit this type of investment. I think Ireland should consider doing the same. Though the NPT does allow for stocks of uranium and plutonium to be used for peaceful purposes, I have deep reservations about the use of nuclear fuel for this purpose. Indeed, the experience of having a near neighbour in, in the UK that holds the cellophane plant is not a pleasant one. For years I have been campaigning for the closure of this facility and helped set up the campaign to close Sellafield in County Wicklow some years ago. The history of this plant has highlighted repeatedly the dangers of its operations. There have been multiple instances where surrounding communities in the UK and indeed across the water here have been put in danger. Over the decades since its establishment, there have been 20 incidences involving radiological release. Indeed, the latest one only in 2005, the Thorpe plant leak, involved the leaking of over 83,000 litres of radioactive material that evaded detection for over nine months. Additionally, over this long period of time, Sellafield has continuously discharged low-level radioactive waste into the sea. Even though some of the radioactivity has been removed, the precipitate has still polluted the Irish Sea. I know that the UK government is taking steps to shut down this part of the plant, although unfortunately this will take at least six years, and they will also be building a new plant in its place. Given the lack of competence in running the one at Sellafield, the idea of a new facility being, being built does not exactly fill me with confidence. However, disregarding my concerns on this particular matter, I do believe that the NPT Treaty has been very useful in past times. And I do think now, though, that it needs to be strengthened with binding targets set. The idea of states being allowed to continue to develop weapons is not in anyone's interests, and all efforts must be made to prevent it.